has no red line. It goes to the stratosphere. If you guys love the outdoors and going cross country in the motorhome, I have the video for you because right here, right now, I'm gonna show you two motorhomes, RVs, that are really popular these days. This is the Winnebago Solus 59P and 59PX. And this is basically a smaller class B motorhome, two versions of it, more basic one and fully loaded. Uh, that can sleep four people and have all the amenities built into it and they're built on the Ram ProMaster chassis So let's start right here right now with this 59P If you guys remember Westphalia uh, Motorhomes and little buses from before they're usually VW buses or maybe Mercedes buses Well, this is a similar concept because it has a pop top that I'll show you in a second first of all This is a 2021 model brand new gas powered so let me pop the hood really quick and show you what's going on under here because these are not diesel motorhomes which actually helps because it lowers the cost and uh, it's a little bit more simple yes it doesn't tow a heck of a lot but let me show you what's going on this TFL camper corner episode is brought to you guys by our friends at Trans West use the link in the description of this video below check them out they have both of these units uh, but they're telling me they're very popular a lot of people like the concept of this, although these vents are not four-wheel drive, they can still get you out there to see the world. This is a 3.6 liter gas Pentastar engine and it's around 280 horsepower and around 260 pound-feet of torque. So not a torque monster, but this RV doesn't weigh a lot and it's a little bit more compact than some of the other big Class C's that have overhangs over the cabs and they're big and heavy. So you're getting kind of simplicity, a little bit lower price of entry, and a lot of good maintenance items. Here's your washer fluid, here's your kind of air intake, everything is at hand, and everything is very simple to get to and change. Let's get behind the wheel. Rear view camera, yes the screen is pretty small, but there is rear view and it's up high so you can kind of see everything that's behind you. I've driven several different ProMaster vans, both gas and diesel. And actually, I don't think it's a bad thing that this is a gas-powered motorhome. First, it's very quiet. And then acceleration, let me show you. There, that's about 40 miles an hour. It's not too bad. Yes, I'm not carrying any, any extra gear, but this van is fully equipped. So yes, if you're gonna be going high in the mountains, uh, you may have to ring out this engine, but in normal driving around the country, I think this is just fine. And the ride is nice and comfy. And this van turns on a dime, I love that. These are relatively small motorhomes. Here are some of the dimensions. This is about 20 feet long. This one is about 21 feet long. They're both six foot eight inches wide, which is about 80 inches. For comparison, a Ram TRX is 88 inches wide. So these are actually narrower than a Ram's off-road uh, premium truck. And height is also manageable. Eight foot 11, nine foot five inches because of the air conditioner pretty small let's jump inside the cab really quick and then see the meat of this van so come along this is pretty much a standard Ram ProMaster chassis so um, if you know Ram ProMaster vans you'll be familiar with this lots of cup holders down here three one USB ports 12 volt ports uh, here's your transmission it has a tow haul mode this van uh, these motorhomes will tow around 3,500 pounds so not a ton of towing capability, but it's enough to bring a trailer, maybe a small boat, maybe a small trailer with a side-by-side -side on it. All of that is possible. 
So this is a single sliding door configuration. And you got a side step even on this base model, which is a little bit more basic. And pricing starts at around 100,000 bucks. But this is a fully equipped motorhome like I'll show you, including toilet, shower, and even the air conditioning in the other one. So let's go through it. First up, this fridge. So it's positioned by the door here for a couple of pur purposes. First of all, it's easy to get to from the outside and also to get easy to get into from the inside. So once again, then come along a little bit further. Look, there's a pretty cool graphic here as well. It says two people on the bottom, two people on top with a pop top roof. Little stove, little sink, actually pretty good surfaces and cabinetry down here and a little table so if you need more surface kind of for cooking you have it right there finally let's do the pop top i love this part because it keeps the motorhome small but you can extend it when you need to so there are two latches actually triple latch system on both sides so you basically undo these hooks Make sure that they're magnetic and they're stowed. And you undo the safety latches as well. There's two of them on each side. And then you just come up here and you push. And then there's some struts that open up the top. Check it out from the outside. Huh? You see what I mean? It kind of has that Westphalia look, but this is a Winnebago. It's much larger, as you can see, I'm 6'2", and I can walk all the way through this van, so it's way bigger than a VW bus or a Mercedes bus would be with a similar type of concept. So let's get on top. So this ladder right here actually breaks into two pieces and stows away. So very easy access. This is a brand new motorhome. There's some plastic here. You have windows, you have a vent up top. Check it out, a vent. Latches, very comfortable for two people to sleep and actually look at the outdoors as well with these side windows. Once again, commercial type van, so the doors will open, can open way out. Full bug net, actually on the front and the back. In the front, it's also magnetic. I'll show you that in a second, so you don't have to do the zipper every time. And in the back here, it is a zipper, so you've got storage right here on the floor. Extra storage maybe for some sleeping bags, maybe a chair, folding chair that you can put outside. And back here, so you just fold this out like this, and very easy to get on top of. You don't have to, you know, climb up, you don't have to jump. Like I said, I'm about 6'2". Check it out. Ah. And by the way, these windows are full blackout. It's one thing I, I'm not a morning person. So these are full blackouts. They're on both sides. Um, there's a vent up here. This one does not come with an air conditioning system. I'll show you that in a second. Storage, but you can black this out completely and sleep. Uh, very nicely and still have storage down below access this is your water management here's how you fill up the water tank it's around 21 gallons uh, this also has a toilet that i'll show you in the other one you can control there's a also a water heater you can connect your hose right here Did you see that? It turns on a dime. Very nice. Now, this is the 59PX. And the biggest difference is length. You get about a foot more space in the back, which transitions directly into storage. But first, here's this bar I was talking about it before. It stows on each side. And this can be an awning, um, either from the top with magnets it stows away really easily you pull out the spin it's 
stows away pretty simple. Everything is very simple on this. So this PX model has everything, including air conditioning, which I need right now because it's getting to be a very hot day. But like I said, check it out. It transitions, transitions to cargo space. You have about a foot extra space. This is perfect for a mountain bike. You can put a mountain bike, maybe two if you're lucky, and you have tie down points right here. So you can tie down your mountain bike or some cargo down here. Here's of course your shoreline cable. But this unit also is equipped with a generator, so you don't need shore power. There's a full uh, 13 and a half, 13,500 BTU unit, kind of a four level switch. Right here in your living room space, it's your control panel for all of your, most of your controls. Um, you have a solar system, there's already a solar on top. Um, you can do an additional solar plug-in panel in the back with an additional plug. Right here is your monitoring panel for your battery, uh, propane, uh, gray water tank, and batteries. Right here is your generator start button. The generator itself lives underneath the rear floor space in the back, so it's, it wouldn't bother you much if you're up here in the front. And come up. Here's your indoor toilet slash shower. Yes, it's a shower. See? The water tank is around 21 gallons, so it's not gigantic. Um, it's also used for drying clothes or storing clothes. But if you remove this, you can get in, but it's a little bit small for me, which is why You see that? I, I cannot stand up all the way in here. But this toilet is a remote cassette. You handle all your business here, and from the outside you can remove the cassette and dump it appropriately. Down here is your gray water tank dump. So the water that's either in the shower or in the sink will be in this tank, and then you can dump it here. So you have that capability. And the guys at TransWest also installed this. It's a cradle point cellular booster, basically. It's quite expensive, it's over 2,000 bucks. But if you're using this as your mobile office, this is the way to go for strong signal, reliable signal, pretty much everywhere. And the double antennas on the roof. Here for the side door on both vans, there is a, a zip bug screen as well and it's magnetic on this side you see that it's got a magnet line so when you close it it just seals against itself so that's pretty handy it's kind of a premium feature once again same pop top right here but there's an extra table both of them come with this table that stows away behind the seats check this out Boom, so you can sit here. These seats have seat belts on both of these, so four people can legally ride in here. See, there's mom and dad and the kid over here. Then, you can also rotate the seats like this, here. Hey, look at this, first time. Boom, so easy. Another thing I like about the ProMaster chassis right here, you got big disc brakes front and rear. This is the rear wheel. You can see the disc brake in here. Helps you with stopping power because this van does weigh a little bit more than others. Um, and of course, if you tow in the trailer, this helps. And because this is a ProMaster, you get these giant side mirrors. These are really great. You got a spotter mirror on each side and giant surface. I love these. So yes, of course, it's not a Mercedes Sprinter chassis, which is diesel and four-wheel drive, but those units sell for way higher pricing. So if it was me, and if I didn't want to go too much off-road, I think this is what I would choose, because you get all of the amenities built into a nice, manageable RV. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and go back to tfltruck.com for more news views and more real-world RV reviews.